Hey everyone, you're watching Build Series in New York City. I'm your host, Lauren Moraski, with our next guest. You know her from starring turns on Arliss and Grey's Anatomy. She's also appeared on the big screen in Sideways and Under the Tuscan Sun. Now the lovely Sandra O oh is returning to TV in the lead role of BBC America's new series, Killing Eve. Take a look. I think about you all the time. I think about what you're doing and who you're doing it with. I think about what you eat before you work or what shampoo you use. I think about what you feel when you kill someone. I just want to know everything. Bye-bye. Four people are dead and it's all your fault. Somebody help me! She will keep hurting people until I catch her. I have to find her. She wants me to find her. You're not saving the world, honey bunch! I'm going to talk to her. No! You're getting off and sniffing out a psycho! Tell me what you want. And one of them is how about Anita? Please. Please welcome Sandra O. Oh. Yes. We are so excited to have you here today. Thank you oh so much. Goodness. Especially the news just broke that the show hasn't even premiered yet, guys, but it's already been picked up for season two. Yeah, it just came. It just right. Came All just right. Came. So yes. <laughs> Yes. How does that feel? I'm really excited. Yeah. It's because it's also like I was talking to Jody. We really just want to continue. We want to know what happens to these characters, um, and it also is is great to just be settled the things that you that you wanted. I really wanted a second season, and now I know I can kind of relax, go into the work, and start preparing. Exactly. Okay. For those who don't know, give us a quick rundown of what the show is about. Well, as you see from the clip, yeah. um, at the beginning, I play um, I play Eve Palastri, and she's, you know, a middle-aged lady who's kind of plateaued in her life and her career, and but she has this obsession with uh, female assassins, and then she enters into this kind of cat and mouse, or yeah, cat and mouse relationship uh, with Villanelle, played by Jodie Comer. Yeah, and incredible. What was it that really attracted you to you about this role? appeal to you? You know, I'd say um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who did Fleabag, she uh, created the show and wrote the, uh, the scripts. Um, it was um, not only the subject matter, not only the genre, but I will say particularly the tone of the show. Uh -huh. uh, it has this blend, and it was tricky to do, um, it had this blend of, of, of drama, um, uh, of thriller, but also of this kind of demented naughtiness, you know, in an, yeah. with an English spin on it. And I was like, what is that? I could, I could see it from the page. Yeah. And I felt quite aligned to her, her voice. So that was really why I kind of wanted to delve in. There's a little bit of humor in it, a little dark yes, humor, dark, right? Dark humor. Yeah, I mean, right. how, do, how do you sort of balance the two when you're playing the character of Eve? You know, I think, um, it's really about staying, it's, truthful to the moment. Mm -hmm. that there, there are um, strange pivots. And then I think in uh, as an actor, you're conscious that it is a, 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 to, to, to switch the moment from something that's maybe heavily dramatic yeah. into something that is going to throw the audience or is uh, unexpected. But as an actor, it's it just always has to be grounded as much as possible in the, in the truth. It's just like as, as you would be playing let's say a scene where you're crying, let's right. say emotional scene. It's it's almost like this it's almost like the same like uh the, how you have to uh commit to the truth of it is same with comedy even more actually with comedy. I'm really interested in the the relationship because I've only seen the first two episodes that always go, is going to actually play out between your character and Jody's character. Can you kind of tease out sort of what we can expect as the season goes on because there com becomes like sort of an obsession, I understand. I gotta tell you, I think this poster is quite apt. Yeah. Um, so just look at the poster. Yeah. And we'll so you know, no, it we right. it, it is kind of a, a, a an equal interest and drive and obsession with the other. Yeah. Um, and over the course of eight episodes, you'll see how <laughs> <laughs> their relationship unfolds. Um, because we our characters spend a lot of time apart, but thinking of the other. 
actress. Oh, uh, yeah. And what about your the husband on the show? Fantastic. I mean, he's oh, great. Donna. You guys, like, there's some chemistry yes, there. I yes. feel it watching it. You know, I, I felt uh, uh, when we went for the very first uh, read through, the first five seconds uh, meeting Owen, I knew it was like, okay, this is great. It's going to be a believable uh, relationship and marriage. And I just also think it was really important for me to see that Eve is grounded and has a positive relationship. You know, complicated, long term, it's missing stuff. It has stuff, um, and he is uh, a grounding force for her. Is there any part of you that's an Eve? Sure. <laughs> so you know, all, in, in yeah. some ways, uh, yeah. you know, all, all of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, I think, is probably, you know, the most, one of the most amazing things about my job mm -hmm. is, like, w w what can I explore? What can I give of myself to hunt my own assassin down? And, you know, that's, for me, the kind of creative, juicy places that um, I uh, want, my, want to bring myself to. It's not like, um, it's not a documentary. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're definitely yeah. in a thriller yeah. genre, and it's fun, and it, it's entertaining, because Villanelle Jody's character is just such a, devilish character, and she's an assassin. Yeah. Um, so you're not kind of delving into the reality of it. It's more in a um, metaphoric way. Sure. But, uh, but I think that we are all bringing all of ourselves to it. And it's nice to see two real female leads. You also have a female showrunner. Um, why is it important in, in this case to have that and seeing that on the on the small screen in this case? I don't know if it's, like, it's necessarily it's a, it's a one. It, yeah. It's a, it, it's important because hopefully it's relevant and hopefully people will like it. Yeah. Um, but that's just just the way that this project fell together. And obviously it's the point of view and where Phoebe Waller Bridge wants to go, Sid Gentle wants to go, BBC America. Mm -hmm who, you know, commissioned this, wants to go. And I like being a part of that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I yeah. really like, you know, this was in the pipeline for a while. So the fact that it's coming out now, and I think people are, are more ready, you know, and more willing to go into a show that's about female psychology. Yeah, and also breaking down stereotypes, too, for these types of characters and roles, Yes, because right? absolutely. You know? you know, you have a typical, let's say, assassin, mm -hmm. um, spy kind of show, and um, uh, both of the characters really uh, upend the, the stereotype. It's like Villanelle is not constantly a femme fatale, you know? She's devious and ridiculous, and and, and, <laughs> and Eve is not... not um, just like, um, uh, she's not in a procedural, right. hunting down a killer, you know what I mean? The, the characters are layered, and it's great to play um, a, a wide range of emotions. And this was based on a couple of novels, right? Novellas. Novellas. Yeah, and did you, were you familiar with them? Did you kind of touch? No, actually the novellas were not published. Oh. Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. The novellas were, were 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 published last year, and okay, so yeah. so so they had the material, the source material beforehand. And then what happened was, Sid Gentle, they saw Phoebe's uh, flea bag on stage, and then they, and they made a very interesting match between her voice and Luke Jennings' voice. And so she really put her kind of own spin on it. But yes, they're based on those novellas. Interesting. So how does it stay true to those in, in many ways? No, it, it, I think it, it, it veers off okay. of it. You okay. know, but the, the characters are there. Okay. The, the, the concept and the genre is there. Um, some of the humor, I think, is Phoebe's own um, and the twistedness. Yeah. But it, it's also dark and twisted as well. We're seeing a lot of crime dramas out there. Why do you think this one stands out and is special? I think the characters are extremely interesting, and we spend a lot of time with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's much more. Uh, it's like, a, it's like a psychological character show, embedded in a th thriller. <laughs> I love uh, yeah, you, you know yeah. what I mean. So yeah. you, you're, you're, you're uh, and so that, along with the tone, um, and the fresh take on these two types of characters, these uh, archetypal characters, um, I think is what makes it special and different. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm imagining, like, over the uh, course of the last few years, you could have had options to, you know, jump into various different shows over the last few years. I mean, it must have been something really about this one that really drew you in. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agreed. It's like I, I'm extremely grateful that I am able to make, and I, I want to make be able to make choices and have actually have agency over my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, as an actor, sometimes that's, it takes a while for that to happen. Um, so I was very um, judicious in my choices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's like falling in love. You know, you might have to date for a while, but like, you know, when you find the right one, then I commit. Yeah, I know that you were uh, recently in a new uh, show, uh, actually film on Netflix, right? And yes, uh, yes. yeah, so what was that film? What is it called again? It's called Meditation, Meditation. Park. Okay, I haven't seen it yet, oh, but I've it's heard wonderful. it was really good. Oh, thank you. And yes. So for those of us do, who don't know what it is, like, what was about that role? Meditation that, Park yeah. is my third film with yeah. the Canadian filmmaker Mina Sham, and we've done three films together over three decades. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not joking. Um, and it's it's a beautiful and I would say very modern feminist film about our mother's generation uh, moving towards independence. So I play the character of, a, it's, it's based, uh, it, it focuses around um, the character of Maria, who mm -hmm. is my mom, played by Cheng Pei Pei. So have you seen Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? She uh, played Jade Fox, oh. she's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Um, and so she's my mom, and okay. it's a very family kind of drama, but it focuses on how she discovers a betrayal from my father, huh. played by Tsai Ma, and how she moves towards independence. You know, that, like, example, it's revolutionary for some women of a certain generation from a certain culture to learn how to ride a bike, huh. to, as you know, pump their own gas. You know what I mean? To make their own money. Um, and uh, I just feel like, <laughs> it's like, take your mom. Take your mom, see this, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I really love it. And it's also a, a very beautiful portrayal of life in um, Vancouver, Chinatown. Oh, sounds really incredible. Okay, yeah. we've got to check it out. It's on Netflix now, it's I think. On Netflix yeah. Now, okay. Yes. Oh, a lot. And we're, a lot of it, a lot has been talked about about representation on screen. And um, do you think that the 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 TV industry and the movie industry is moving in the right direction in that in that way. Change is very slow. Yeah. And I always have to believe that right? the arc bends towards long and it and bends towards justice. So I have faith in that. Mm -hmm. And it is slow. It is slow. I'm happy. It's like, it's a part of my life's work to be a part of that bending. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very important to me. Um, and it is slow. So I, I'd say where we are is exactly where we are. And there's more work to be done. And there's things to celebrate. Sure. Yeah. Is there a role that you haven't tackled that you'd like to down the line? Oh sure, I just don't know what it is yet. <laughs> I just don't the know what. The sky's the limit. Yeah, the sky's yeah. the limit. Okay. Oh yeah, oh, but I, I I will say, I love sci-fi. Yeah. I love yeah. sci-fi, okay. and there are many times where I'm like, I can play an alien. <laughs> I can play the leader of some universe, um, and I always felt like Asians should be should be in space. Uh, yes, thank you very much. We should be in space. It's like I don't kind of know why sci-fis don't have more Asians in it. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the forefront of technology. So, um, you know, that that genre um, has always um, interested me. All right, lots of time. Do you, <laughs> do, you, um, do you remember the moment or the thought process that, behind wanting to be an actress and knowing that this is what you wanted to do? At what point in your life? That's a great question. You know, I think I was really, really lucky. Some people, this happens for very young. I think eight to 12 mm -hmm. is a magical age to potentially find what you want to do for the rest of your life. And that did happen to me. Um, my sister was the one who convinced me to audition for my very first play. And I was 10. Wow. And then something happened, and I just never looked back. Huh. What yeah. was that first play? The Canada Goose. <laughs> <laughs> I played the nemesis, the Wizard of Woe. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Oh yes, oh yes, I, I, in the Canada Goose. Uh, but it is, it's, it's that thing of like, it's not necessarily a moment, it's, or maybe, or, or it's, or, so you know what, that's not true. When I was eight, I think it was, a touring production, I'm remembering this now, uh, when I was eight, a touring production of Annie came to Ottawa. Huh. And I remember the perspective is from like this angle. So it was great, my parents took me to see Annie. You know, obviously we were in like, way up high. And for the first time I saw young girls like myself on stage singing and dancing, I was just like, what the hell is that? And um, I was dancing at that time. I, I wanted to be a dancer. Um, but also at, at that special time, about 10, you're, you're going to enter into a professional school. Mm -hmm. And I just wasn't good enough. Huh. I didn't have it. I didn't have it. But then the opening for acting happened. And so I think, you know, your question, of like, do you remember? If I can say when I first saw Annie, yeah. and I was like, what is that? And then my sister saying, go audition. I think that you'd be great. And then I, that's what happened. And I was really lucky. Really, I haven't done anything but act since I was 10. Yeah. I was going to ask you, sometimes I ask people, like, whether it's been luck or hard work and, and talent and what you think your success you can attribute it to. I, it's, got, it's got to be all of them. You know, I yeah. think at, this, at this, this, this far out now, 30 years into it, you know, I realized that when I uh, first left theater school, I went to the National Theater School, and I first left it, it was luck, 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 luck. You know, I I left school and was the uh, the star of a television film, The uh, Diary of Evelyn Now, Mina Shum's A Double Happiness, a short film. I did Oleana. And you know what I mean? I had a lot of experience, and and it all and I just thought it was going to be like that forever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then the yeah. next twenty years yeah. is um, a lot of hard. Work and the rest of it is is hard work, but I I I can look back now that time that was so formative for me that what I think was all about luck and timing, um, really gave me a, a a really strong foundation to be able to weather this very difficult in industry sure. with a sense of confidence. Sure, you know that's a key part of life, confidence. Yeah, in it's, many in many yeah, aspects. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, when you think back on a, sh a movie like Sideways, mm -hmm. uh, was it? Did you know when you were filming it that this is going to be really special in terms of um, critical acclaim? And it still seeps. I mean, it's still oh, referenced yeah. to this day all the time. I don't think you can ever know critical acclaim, yeah. but I will say, I think for a, a lot of people who were on that set, top to bottom, it was so much fun. Shit, it was. What, what you see yeah. is r really what we were doing. It was fun. It was great to be a part of. Everyone is at the top of their game. And it's just one of those highlight experiences I know of my career was to be a part of that film. But like your question of like, do you know it's going to be a, a, like a hit? No, we just knew that we loved doing it. Huh. Well, that, me that must mean something, right? It has you know, to mean it's, something, it, yeah. But you, it does because it's like just the experience of itself yeah. is, is positive and then you can, you know, let go, go of it because, you know, there's a lot of positive experiences that, it, that some, for some reason, one reason or another, it doesn't hit yeah. or it doesn't resonate and it's heartbreaking, but at least you had the experience in, of itself as positive. Are you? Do you have any time to work on any other projects now that Killing Eve just got picked up for a season two? Anything else in the pipeline? I'm not going to talk about it. Oh! Uh, oh. I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. Um, and then I just really work on my own stuff and my, my craft that I probably would never share with anyone. Okay. But I always feel like um, I, I always try and stay active working, you know, creatively. I think you need to. I know I feel like... Acting, you know, being an artist is not just this and also just filming. It's like I feel like you have to constantly be um, inputting, right, before you have to output in a big way. Got it. All right. Well, we're going to turn it over to questions from the crowd. So let's do it. Who's first? Hi. Uh, hey, hi. This is going to be an online question um, right. from May. Uh, what is it like working with Jodie Comer, and were you familiar with her before starting the series? I was not familiar with uh, Jody's work. And Jody's, you know, just at the, the, the start of this grand career that I really believe that she will have. Um, 
But oh my gosh, the, so the first time I met her was in a dingy little studio in Studio City. She came in <laughs> off the plane, basically wheeling her like a uh, little suitcase. And we sat down and we did like a, a nine page scene. Um, and it was really exciting. It's just like when you, you know, you know, you're on a date with someone. It's like, oh, this is going well. This could, this could go somewhere. And so I feel like we immediately had a great chemistry. Awesome. All right. Who's next? Hi, Sandra. Um, Hi. So this is a little bit of a self-indulgent question, but um, like many millennial girls, I feel like we've grown up loving the Princess Diaries. I love so, it. <laughs> I have to ask, what was it like being on set with Anne and Julie and being directed by Gary Marshall? Gary Marshall. God, I got to tell you, that's another highlight for me. You know, I did that film a, a, a while ago, and working with Gary... This is what he told me. This is all he told me. Okay, go out there and make funny. <laughs> That's it. That's basically it. And I got it. And I was like, I got it. I will do that for you. And he let me do basically anything. You know, so it's like, I'm just trying to fill it. I'm just trying to uh, keep, it, uh, keep it alive. And that, uh, that just meant so much to me. And working with Anne and seeing also her at the beginning of this great lunch, and Julie Andrews, please. <laughs> Julie Andrews, um, was all, 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 all the dreams that any, you know, you know, any young persons uh, are, are made of. It's is to, to meet her and to work with her. It was fantastic. It was great fun. Um, I have a very special place in my heart for, for Princess Diaries. Thank you for asking. Great question. And I know a lot of people do. So um, who's next? Hi. Um, so I was wondering, well, congratulations first off for being picked up for a second season. Thank you. And I was wondering if the character Eve has like taught you anything about yourself yet. Like I know it's such a, it's already so new, but if she's taught you a lesson or anything. Yes. You know, I think... Eve is much more unconsciously uh, being confronted with things that the challenges that Villanelle is is putting in front of her, um, and I feel like a woman who's now in my forties, also examining questions of. Who am I? What do I want? And most like mostly, because it's really interesting being in your 40s. It's really, for those of you who are not here yet, it is great. It is really good. It's very powerful. And I'm curious about it. Like, what is vitality? We see Eve, and she's kind of like sitting back. She's kind of like plateaued. And here's this energy that kind of awakes things in her. So that's what I feel like Eve has brought to me. What do I need to be uh, um, inspired by? What inspires me? What gives me energy? Um, and it's definitely working on the show. And I think that's also a part of why I wanted to do the show. But seeing how, how Villanelle sparks Eve is also seeing how this show and Eve sparks me. I love that, great. Well, that's a great place to end this. Uh, Sandra, th thank you so much for coming by today. Killing Eve, it premieres this Sunday night, 8 p.m., BBC America, and give it up one more time. Sandra Oh, everyone. Yeah.